For our third trip of the season, a momentous one, we travel across the country to another North Star State, settled in the far north reaches of the Appalachian Mountains, in a land of rushing rivers and heavy snowfall you find a haze of the salt water that crashes its rocky coast. This is, quite possibly, the most beautiful and expansive playground any ice fisherman could dream of. A place commonly forgotten across the ice belt and known as the Pine Tree State. These hills and valleys play host to a population of crappies few have ventured to chase. Welcome to Maine. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. Look at this thing. God. Beast. All right, so we're out on the lake, and uh, all we're doing right now is popping around, and honestly, we're just trying to get pink a couple so that one of us can do really well in this derby. And then, yeah, we're just gonna keep getting after it, but name of the game right now is finding bait balls and big fish suspended around them. And we're just gonna try to chase one freak. Too way, far. way too far. Come back 10 feet. Towards me. 15 feet. I'm trying to get them so they swim. Oh, now they're coming back this way. Yeah, so come 15. And oh, go this way a little bit, Pink. There you go. They're almost going back under his first hole. Yeah, I'd go back. Go to, to your first go hole. Go back right to that now. hole. They're swimming. Drop the through. auger. Yeah, they're almost under that hole right now. Oh, yeah. Yep, they're going to be oh, under Oh, God, you. this is going to be perfect. Get down there. My bottom? Okay. Got one. Got him. It doesn't feel real big, but you never know. <sighs> Decent one. Sick. Okay. Okay, just corked a good one. Uh, we just marked a school that was floating around on live. It was like two fish. We drilled on them like four times. Finally got on top of them. I dropped down. He was really high up off the bottom on the vex. I got down there. He chased me up about three feet. Popped a pinhead. I'm gonna get this thing measured for our tournament. It's really, oh, it's really cold out today. So I'm gonna try to do this quick. All right, 14 inch, you're going back. Whoa, wrong way, wrong way. Oh my god. Bye. Sick. Okay, we're on. Talk to me. Okay, so we just got that one registered in the tournament. I got three on my stringer right now. I need two more for a limit. And we're looking pretty good. Got two over 14, one like 13 and three quarter. So looking for a 15 plus or two of them actually. He's coming to this hole. Yeah. Nothing to see here. Keep going. 
got something on your head. <laughs> Christy! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Got it. Oh, he's off. That's unfortunate. Oh, the middle. No. Oh, he's quite fast. He's still here. Come he's back pissed. He's so pissed. Got him that time. <laughs> that was cool. It's fighting like the last one. Get, oh, solid one. Yep. Get him, get him, get him. Yes. Nice fish. Jeez, Probably like a 12 and a half. That's a built one though, compared to those other ones. Dick. Dick. I lipped that fish. I had him on for probably a foot. Dumped him, went right back down, corked it. Oh yeah. Never even left, that was sick. All right, we'll get this one on the bump board for now, try to fill our limit. 12 and three quarter. Mark 12 and it. three quarter. Mark it. All right, so now I'm gonna get this one back. I gotta do a little release video here, but 12 and three quarter incher, going back. That was sick. Peace. Yes. Give me some. That was sick. Heck yeah. Woo. On to the next one, boys. No, I plucked one. They're still there. Yeah, he's pissed. Super pissed. Got him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's a good one. Heck yeah. Boom. Yes. Another probably 12 and a half, 13. I think the other one was still there. All right, just got on another one. We had a little two pack, was able to drill on them. They got really aggressive. Again, I lipped it, came back, ate it again. These fish get so pissed off. Right there. That one will be 13 and three quarters in this tournament. All right, gonna get this one back. 13 and three quarter. Number five, five alive. See ya. Yes. <laughs> it's 11 o'clock right now. Yesterday night, we told ourselves we would only give this lake till 11 o'clock. We would come try to catch a couple and then we would leave because we've got a lake that we know of multiple freaks being caught at. Uh, and we're going to try to get over there right now. It's only about a 35 minute drive. We did not want to waste a bunch of time here. We wanted to pluck a few, get pink as limit for the tournament. And now we are going to bounce and get to that other lake to spend the rest of the prime time window to try to see if we can catch a giant. So we're gonna get our stuff together, packed up, loaded in the truck. We're gonna rush over there quick because we've got a little bit of a hike and we're gonna try to get a freak. We drove 17 hours for this, so it's full sem time, oh, baby. 17, 27, don't short change me. Here. Sorry, we drove 27 hours for this, so it's time for a full send. Let's go get a giant, boys. The Chronicles just started as a handful of buddies, you know, filming some crappie fishing, doing a little cooking at the end of the day, but it's really developed into a community, you know, surrounding crappie fishing, ice fishing in general. None of this would even be a thing without you guys. You know, if you guys didn't show support saying how much you liked it, you know, how much you either learned or, you know, how much you loved Pink's cooking recipes, even if that's all you're here for. I have a career in this fishing industry because of this series and because of you fans and mostly because of the three guys in that room. We've had a lot of great, you know, memories together. We got one hell of a team, to be fully honest. You know, I got I got some of my best buddies that I get to go fishing with all the time. I'd go to battle with these guys on any fishery in the world, to be fully honest. Never in my life would we have thought that we would do what we've, like where we've uh, been and where we're going. I mean, we got to drive 27 hours to come out to Maine because of great sponsors and great support from you. And if 10 year old Adam, who was catching uh, bluegills off a dock up in Park Rapids would have known 
that was gonna happen, you know, 19, 20 years later, I think he kind of would have lost it, so. We're just really thankful that we have a lot of you guys that absolutely love what we're doing. It's been, it's meant a lot to us. I mean, we were able to come to Maine and, you know, we checked off some bucket list trips this year that we've always wanted to do areas we've always wanted to go and experience. And it's completely because of you guys supporting this. And so it's super cool to, to say, you know, looking back that, you know, man, I would have loved to, to film a fishing show. We're doing that. I would love to, to have a cooking show. We're doing that. I mean, and not only is that for me, but I get to show you guys stuff that I love, that we're passionate about, that me and my buddies love to do. We absolutely have had a blast. So thank you guys so much for, you know, just following along and showing us support. We greatly appreciate it. We got a ton of awesome fans and uh, can't thank you guys enough for, for just kind of coming along for the ride. And it's been an absolute blast to share it with you guys and some of my best friends. So. And who knows, we, well, this might be the last one, so, yeah. If this is it, it uh, was a hell of a ride. I mean, if it's the last one, it is what it is, but I don't want it to be the last one. I hope we get to keep doing this, and uh, we got a lot, of, a lot of stuff that we still want to show. And I have uh, lifelong memories because of this, so. I really hope you guys all enjoyed this series. So hopefully you guys stick with it and we'll see where this takes us. All right, update. Um, we are at a new lake. We're actually back to a lake. You probably saw it earlier in this trip. Uh, we came out here briefly to check ice and just get a lay of the land. Um, and we've been itching to get back here since that day. There's the biggest crappies potentially in the United States in this lake and we're really excited to go try to hook one of them. So what we're doing now is uh, there's quite a bit of snow on this lake and we don't want to drag a sled all the way across it because it's fairly big. So we're throwing on the clam backpacks. We got all our tackle batteries, Vexlars, everything loaded in them and we're going to grab the live and we ain't stop until we find a fish. So either the video is now going to go to nighttime and we didn't catch anything or hopefully something cool happens We just got out to this back end of this island. Um, there's a pretty much the whole lake on the other side of us is pretty deep water with steep breaks. And this part of the lake is quite a bit shallower and more gradual breaks. So uh, we decided that we were going to start over in this area. And it seems like there's quite a bit of fish around in this general vicinity. Uh, Griff just set the hook into something that had some pretty good weight to it. We're not sure what it was. Um, it came off halfway up. But uh, we're just going to kind of pepper around here a little bit um but one thing that we did today just to you know stay as mobile as possible is we shifted all of our gear from the ice houses to our backs and these are the clam backpacks these things are absolutely stinking awesome you can fit all your gear in here um i i, I couldn't even begin to tell you how much stuff in here from drill batteries to those those tackle bags are literally our tackle storage yeah like that it has everything we use all year the whole year the whole year has battery compartments and everything. Ooh, we got Ooh, it. that had some weight to it. Yeah, Larry. <laughs> Larry. <laughs> God. Oh, oh, darn it. We love largemouth open water, but not ice fishing. <laughs> they are so deceiving. God, he fought just like the like he's <laughs> gonna fight. That's like a three and a half pounder. <laughs> nice fish, but god dang. <laughs> Talk about heart beating. All right, well, keep moving. That's all right. The thing in these lakes has been, like, either we get on a lake and it's infested with crappies and perch and they're everywhere, or all the life's in one area. So we just have to move, 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 move. So that's what we're going to do. We found life. But we found life, so... 
when we found life, we got to look around for the crappies. And usually when we find life, we always sample it just to figure out what species yeah. it is. So just we usually, you know. yeah, we usually try to catch a couple fish just because, you know, you cannot say for sure that all of them are, but if you catch like two, three, four fish and they're all the same species, that usually gives you a good idea. Right. Um, and oftentimes what we have actually found is uh, when some fish are glued to the bottom, the crappies are up top. When other fish are up top, sometimes the bigger crappies are glued to the bottom. So right. normally they stand out. And once we figure where they are related to the bottom, uh, that lets us, you know, just specifically target them and makes it a little bit easier for us when uh, we're moving around to be like, oh no, that's not a crappie or that's more than likely a crappie. Right. So, yep. Another big fish. Oh. Another large mouth. Too. All right, now we can go. Yep. Putting together a good oh. bag, Grant. Yeah, another large mouth. Too bad they don't have large mouth in the know, crap right? tag. <laughs> and they're super long. <laughs> look at look at that bar going down its side. That's cool. That's super cool. Especially back, like right down here, it's yeah. like solid. That's nuts. Never caught one with that much of a bar. Okay, Straight. so we sampled the school. They're definitely bass. Time to move. All right, so we thought we had a really good game plan today and it completely backfired and I think we hiked about six miles today on the ice using live drilling, looking, burning drill batteries and uh, we didn't catch them. We didn't catch them. We caught two like right away, which was sick. And then nothing after that, which was not sick. So we're planning to go to a different lake that's way closer so we can sleep in because everyone's ground to the bone right now. It sucked that we had to have a crappy day right at the end of the trip. Would have rather started with that, but here we are. So we got some cooking to do here. Luckily, we murked them yesterday, so we still have a bunch of fish left over. I'm gonna use these fillets. We're gonna make some crappie fritters. I'm gonna fry those up in a cast iron pan. And we got some lobsters. They're still in the fridge right now, but we're gonna, we're gonna, well, we're gonna kill those. So let's get to cooking. Our lobster friends are waiting. <laughs> this fish so I'm not gonna use all this I'll probably use maybe I don't know six eight fillets I'm not gonna make a ton of these but what I'm gonna do is just mince it up as fine as possible if you had a food processor you can do that but we're staying in this cabin and we don't have that so probably about a half a pound of meat there I'll mince that up and this shouldn't take too long I like to just cut it as fine as I can one direction and then stack it all up run it back the other way and you just want as fine as little cubes as you can possibly get. It doesn't need to be like a paste or anything because these are all going to be bound together with some breadcrumbs. Just work that fish down as fine as you can get it. Okay, so that fish is all minced up. I'm just going to add that to this bowl right here. Now I'm going to cut up a few more things. I got a little handful of flat leaf parsley right here and some green onions. I'll probably use a little bit of the green tops, but I want this onion part at the bottom. So same thing, mince all that up, and then I'll just zest that lime and probably use about juice of half of it. Get that all mixed in there. A couple tablespoons of mayo, and then I will add the Catch and Cook Whiteout and Catch and Cook Campfire Seasonings. You can still get a discount on these if you wanna use code CROPPY10. You can get yourself a deal on this stuff right here. These seasonings have been used in an unbelievable amount of episodes in the past couple of seasons. So, Check those out and then a little bit of panko breadcrumbs and then you can kind of go crazy with it. I'm gonna do a little red pepper flakes and a little bit of onion powder to finish it off. We'll get that mixed up, add one egg, that'll kind of bind everything together. I'll make some little patties and then we'll get them browning up in the cast iron behind me. So, let's get it chopped up.
Okay, so I got the cast iron hot and got my mixture right here. So what I'm gonna do now is just patty these up into like two inch size little fritter patties and then just get them brown in here. They should only have to cook for about two minutes on each side. They'll get nice and brown. Flip them nice and brown on the other side and they're done. So I'm gonna go through this, do a couple batches real quick, get them finished up and then we'll get the lobsters in because it'll only take about 10 minutes in the oven. So I'm gonna get these pattied, make some fritters. Okay, so those fritters are all done, and um, we have some lobsters here. And we have three lobsters, but there are six of them because they're cut in half now. We didn't show that, but here they are. They look beautiful. I'm gonna take them all and put them in this big bowl, drizzle them with some oil, season them with just uh, some salt and pepper, pretty simple. And then I'm gonna throw them on a sheet pan, throw them into a 450 oven for about 10 minutes, and that's pretty much that. I'm gonna use the back of my knife to just crack each claw I like to do that before I cook them. Seems to help them cook a little bit faster and uh, makes them easier to uh, shell at the end. So I'm gonna get those going in here, get that oil on them, a little bit of seasoning. Got some kosher salt, a little black pepper, and that's it. Lobster's easy, it's one of the best foods. You don't have to do much to it. So let's get them going right now. All right, I'm super stoked on how this turned out. It's smelling amazing. These lobsters look awesome, and the fish fritters look insane. We're gonna start crushing these and uh, make a little dessert. I got a recipe that I think Griff and Waldo are gonna do right now. They're gonna make a little black rifle dessert for us, and then we're gonna get to bed. We got a big day tomorrow. We gotta send it full and hard in the morning, and then we gotta get out of here. So me and Waldo only can fish about a half a day, and we gotta get back to the airport and get back to Minnesota. So we're gonna give her one last try, try to get a big. But first, get a little crappie in me. Delicious. All right, let's eat these lobsters. Lobsters. Lobster. All right, so we got our dinner all made up and now we're gonna do a dessert. Uh, we love all this Black Rifle coffee stuff and we're gonna make a dessert here. Actually, these guys are gonna make a dessert. I'm sick of cooking, so I'm making them do this one. Yeah. We're using the instant coffee from Black Rifle and uh, we're gonna do a Black Rifle whipped cream dessert. So it'll be some crushed Oreos and uh, Basically coffee whipped cream, but you guys are gonna do it. So all you have to do is dump all this stuff in these black rifle tumblers right here. They've been in the freezer for a while, so they're super cold. And then all you gotta do is put the lid on and just shake the crap out of it until it's whipped cream. Sweet. And then oh. you got a cup right there, crush some Oreos, put it in there, put the cream on top, crush a little more Oreos on top. You think you can handle that? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> all right, I'll leave you to it. I think you can make this work. How would you judge? It's not done yet. <laughs> They're doing good though. <laughs> he's got cracking a beer while he's shaking. He's not even shaking it anymore. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> if two. Holy crap. Cheers. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. that's solid. I'd eat that. Obviously. No, it's so easy to make. Yeah. Holy crap. Didn't even break a sweat, right, Griff? <laughs> Still sweat. I think I just put this in a mixer and let it do that.
So here's the update. We were gonna go fishing today and we woke up this morning and drove to the gas station and it snowed like a foot. And it's supposed to snow another foot in like the next couple hours. So up here in the Northeast, the fishing's very good and it's very cool, but the conditions are extremely fluctuating and uh, flat out, today ain't safe. Yeah, the ice conditions aren't even good to begin with up here this year. So we don't wanna be risking it where we were gonna go. We were hoping to take the snowmobile, but now we can't even see the ice, so we don't even know what's what out there. We haven't been out, so we don't want to go out there and have to check, especially in like a total whiteout. So we're playing it safe. Yeah, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it to go through. So we're playing it safe today. We're going to take a look at these jack traps, jack traps, and we're going <laughs> to bring a few back home to Minnesota. But uh, yeah, we got our teeth kicked in yesterday. That's okay. That's part of this. But I think... I think we've all been talking about this the last few days. We've traveled the country now fishing crappies, and uh, I'm excited to get home and catch some big ones because I don't think we realize how good we have it back home. So the next time you see us, in the metro. Metro crop dogs. Wings fold out like this. This is our cross style. Tighten these wing nuts up. <laughs> uh, so then this is how it would kind of sit in the hole. Say this is your hole right here. Drops in. Uh, pull your flag up. Like that. And then you see this hook right here? Oh yeah, yeah. You just bend this down. And then you have this little split ring on the end of the spring steel. Hook it right onto the end of that. And then you just Wait for fish to take it. And then grabs it. Yep. And this just screams, line comes off, your flag's up. Nice. All right, I left the store and had instant regret. I need to get this jack trap bucket. Don't have an ice bucket. I'm back, I need to get it. <laughs> jack traps. Jack trap bucket, elite. I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to say just jack trap. It's gonna have to be fun. <laughs> All right, boys. That was fun. We're yeah. here. Now we gotta hurry a little bit. We still gotta take a bus to the airport. But then we in it. Yep. And then uh, get through security. Hopefully. Hopefully, Luke doesn't have another incident. Did you bring any liquids? Not sure. Okay. We might have issues. But we, uh, so far, the flight is not canceled. Yeah, so far. <laughs> It still says on time, which is a really good thing. Snow's kind of let up a little bit, so I'm hoping this is timed out perfect where we get a little gap and we don't have to worry about snow or cancellations of flights. Because that'll be a whole ordeal. I'm sure you guys would love that, though. So, okay. We just got an update from BART. They just drove through Boston, apparently. They're on, like, the north side, and they got a flat, and they pulled over, and they just pulled, like, a pistol casing out of the tire. <laughs> Which is so lit. <laughs> it's pretty hard. Yeah. I'm sure he's happy about that. Yeah, I think he's happy. What happened on our trip? We heard the boys might not make their flight, but what did we do? We got a shell casing from a gun stuck into the tire at a gas station. You're in the hood. Here, you good? Where is it? Oh, it's in there in the, your little compartment. Look at that thing. That was in my tire. Boom, boom. Hopefully the uh, plug holds. That's a big plug. <laughs> it is so slow. <laughs> Who knows what condition that tire is in. Oh man. Got his bag stuck, number one. Checking that out. You got your bag checked too, didn't you? I did. Yeah. I thought the mic and I got <laughs> bullets, bro. <laughs> yup. Him too. Boys are just on fire today. You got smelt in there? Oh yeah, smell city, boy. Not sure.
crunched perfectly. Oh. What are you rating it? For a Sabero out of an airport, 10. What about generally? What on, on, a gen on a general Sabero level, 7. Like on a global, pizza level, global, like a 5. Global culinary scale. Global culinary scale? I would say like a like a four two. Wow. So it's ten ten for a airport pizza. The four two global. Four two global. Well, it's you? hitting the spot right now because we haven't eaten all day. Well, I'm leading off with these soggy fries. <laughs> About what you'd expect there. Mm. No. No. Right. Lead into this cold chicken sandwich. I don't even know how to open the box. Sabaro. <laughs> That's gotta be Italian. <laughs> Expanding my palate. This is the boot. You gotta stomp the box off with your boot. <laughs> now we're eating pizza. How's it going? It's a four. Point it's going good. Your pizza got some good pop. Oh yeah, it's saggy. All right, we finally made it back to Minnesota. This trip was super sick, but the boys aren't done yet. We're gonna wait to hear from them. They're not gonna be home for probably at least another day. And it sounds like uh, they've had quite the adventure so far. So they just started. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how this pans out, but I'm super stoked to be sleeping in my bed tonight too. So yeah. we're gonna get some sleep and I don't think we're done fishing quite yet. No, we got some more tricks left in store for you guys. All right, good morning everybody and welcome back. As you can tell, we are no longer in Maine. We are back within the 60 mile radius of the Twin Cities. We're back doing our deal. And after traveling around the country chasing crappies, we've kind of all come to the conclusion that uh, I think we were right. The best fishing's literally in our back door. So we're back in the Twin Cities metro area. We're gonna end this with a bang, going for some big ones right within 60 miles like we have been forever so thank you everybody for tuning in this year merch drop three is almost done if you want a break your pb sweatshirt or any of the new stuff make sure you go grab it now we'll be having a live stream to end the year soon with some thorn brother sales but for now we're gonna get after it because it's about negative five these fish don't really want to cooperate but we're gonna catch a few right pink dude i'm cold <laughs> <laughs> Very little. Oh. Minnesota crappie. I was waiting for him to. I literally seen that over the my eyes. That's just a little dink. I'm gonna send him back home. Drift just got plucked too. Maybe they're gonna fire for a minute here now that a couple bait balls have come through, but they are little. Little. So right now I'm using Griff's Chronicle. I got three pound fluorocarbon on here and I put a four millimeter drop XL and just a regular Mackie minnow on it. Something bait fish looking. A lot of these lakes around the area we're fishing in, they chase bait fish, so I went away from a bug pattern and went to a minnow pattern and see if we can catch a few bigger ones. There's definitely bigger ones down there. You can see them in the school. It's just whether or not you can get them to bite. They're so negative with how cold it is out right now. We got this one. Oh yeah. But it came up really fast. There is, I can see there's two better ones like at the bottom of that group. Yeah, the bigger ones did look like they were Crop dog. Boom. What a nine incher. Sick. Back in the metro, baby. 
giants. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's what we're fishing for. <laughs> oh man. Big old D rum. Look at that forehead on that thing. You want them? Okay. We're harvesting that drum. Oh dude, and he crushed it. Oh yeah, I mean absolutely freight trained it. Were you on the school or what are you no. marking on? No, I couldn't see your auger hole, so. No, I was marking the school, but then this fish came in like way higher and I just brought it up to him and he just <laughs> <laughs> that is a giant drum. <laughs> That's like a six pounder. Just suspended up high, dude. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, not the right species, but. <laughs> Fun. That was cool. He's actually pretty, like, his colors are pretty cool, too. I think that one's a bit too big. <laughs> we'll put that one back. <laughs> Look at that thing. Oh my God. Well, not quite on the big crappies yet, but it's kind of the same thing, right? I guess. <laughs> This feels like it's sub 10 pounds. We might have crappie going. <laughs> if it is, it's stout. It's growing. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got? What do we got? Coming up. Oh, giant, giant, dude. Okay, we were just working through literally a school of drum and I just caught this one. I'm gonna get it on the bump right here. Just a skyscraper, I can't even believe that. 14 and a half, 14 and a half on the nuts, but just built, 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 built. Big fish, super thick, probably a two pounder, but I'm gonna get it back really fast. But it's crazy, they're roaming, they're roaming with the school of drum. And uh, it was like you'd catch a drum or have one on or whatever, and then there'd be this different looking mark in the middle, you'd drop down to it. And I had that one and I dumped another one that uh, I wish I would have had because I didn't know that they were going to be crappies. So we're going to keep working through this. My hands are frozen, but we're going to get back to it. Catch another donk. It's it's pretty freaking cold out, guys. <laughs> Feels decent. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. one. Yeah. There we go. There's a nice one right there. That one came on the little pinhead. We haven't used the little guy a whole lot this year. So this one is going to be that 132nd ounce, that new size for this year. And uh, we, they're not the most aggressive fish in the world. So we decided that it wouldn't be the worst idea to downsize and go to some more finesse tactics. We broke out some of the schoolie rods and we decided that maybe going down in size on a pinhead wouldn't be the worst idea ever either. So I'll close, tail pinched, 12 and a quarter. Very nice. That right there is a beautiful little fish. We're gonna get them back. Yeah, we're making sure that we're putting anything over 12 back. You know, it's super important to keep these lakes healthy genetics in the lakes um, and it balances out the population having multiple year classes so they don't become stunted but uh, we are going to keep using this I, I caught that one on a 132nd ounce pinhead that's the little guy um, seemed like these fish are pretty finicky you know this massive cold front came through and it is freezing right now I mean we got the jackets on it is not warm out so 
Uh, with that being said, I went down in size just because it felt like with the bigger one, they were kind of just coming up and looking at it and it seems like that's doing well. I know Pink caught his big, <laughs> big giant one on uh, a schoolie rod. He's using, looks like it's more of a jig and plastic combination. I think Griff's using a pinhead as well. So we're gonna keep bouncing around this school here. Ate it actually pretty good. It's been kind of, kind of lethargic, kind of iffy. Let him go. Yeah, they do. Oh yeah, pretty bad. Don't go. Another one on the pinhead. That one came in and just throttled it. I was working a little one and this thing just come racing by it. Just boom. <laughs> you know you got a big one down there when the other ones get out of the way. Yeah, so nab this nice one. I'm gonna bump it here real quick. It's kind of cold out, so I'm gonna do this quickly and get her back. Uh, 12 and a quarter, but super tall. I mean, look at the thickness of these fish, but I'm gonna get her back here so she don't freeze. Um, yeah, what we're doing is we're just hop hopping around in the little open spots and we're actually like right There's probably 50 houses right behind Bart and uh, We're just hopping around the open spots just looking for schools and we find them We kind of look at them with live kind of decipher whether there's any big ones in the school And if there is then we move in on that school try to catch a couple of them and then we uh, Work on to the next school just keep trying to follow the big ones This thing freight train me Oh yeah, not terrible. That's a good one right there. Probably around another 11 and a half, 12 inch eater. Perfect fish. Well, we've got a youth clinic coming up here in a little bit. So I'm not sure how much more. Griff's working one right now, it looks like. You can always tell when Griff's working one because it's him. But uh, yeah, we, uh, We've had a really, really fun year. This has been amazing traveling around, experiencing new bites, chasing new techniques to on those new bites, um, just new bodies of water, new states, uh, a lot of different forms of travel and transportation. It's been pretty incredible. Griff's got a good one on. <laughs> and it's just been a ton of fun. So we're, uh, we're going to keep trying to catch another big one here soon, but this has just been... This has been one kick-ass here. It's been a ton of fun. We've, uh, and the nice thing is, is we're not nearly as burnt out as we were this time of year last year. Huh, Bart? No, <laughs> yeah. no, we're good. It's a lot better now. So we might try to catch another one or two. Ice is freezing on the lens right now, and we gotta go do a kid's clinic. So thank you everybody so much for watching this year. We appreciate it. If you wanna see us back for a season four, we would gladly do it, but make sure you tell our sponsors and give us, you know, the right feedback. Yeah, and subscribe. We love all you guys. Thank you for the support. Like we said before, none of these travels and things we did are possible without all you. So until next year, uh, we will see you guys later. <laughs> if it ain't a drum, it's big. Please don't be a drum. Just sh everyone shut up. Someone want to come over here and help? Just in case, it feels drummy, but if it's not, it's not. If it's not a drum. If it's not a drum, it's a giant. There are giants in here. There's also drums. There's also a lot of drums. <laughs> are you nervous or are you just shaking because it's cool? Ooh. A little boat. A little boat. A little mixy mix. Oh. Did you see it? Yeah. It what was, was it? It was white. Oh boy. Well, it was white and silver. It's either one. It's either one. <laughs> <laughs> Still no confirmation. Oh, it's a joke. <laughs> but it's really big. <laughs> okay. And we'll end the year on. <laughs> so, <laughs> get it picked up.
Crappy Chronicles season three. That's a wrap, baby. <laughs> Donk. That one's gonna be dinner. <laughs> Meat season. <laughs> oh my God. Then I got my heart going, dude. And cut. Thank you.